Greetings from St. Peter's United Church of Christ. I'm Vicki Allen, student pastor here. Welcome to worship. And I'm Dakota Roberts, associate pastor for operations. And whether you're joining us today on Labor Day or whether you're joining us some other time, uh, we welcome you to this time of worship, this time of worship where we will labor, where you will labor, and where hopefully we all can find rest. Indeed, it is the Christ light that Vicki is holding that leads us into worship. We recognize that some of us have labored to be here. Some of us are in absolute need of rest. Some of us are longing for community. And some of us don't even know what we've brought to this time and these many spaces. So in a spirit of full inclusion, as is the nature of this community of faith, we welcome you just as you are, and we trust that the Spirit will guide each of us as we worship together. egalitarian edition by priests for equality i claim yahweh with joy all the earth serve yahweh with gladness and turn to god's presence with a joyful song know that yahweh is good yahweh made us and we belong to the creator we are god's people and the sheep of god's pasture enter god's gates with thanksgiving and the courts with praise give thanks to god bless god's name for Yahweh is good, God's steadfast love endures forever, and God's faithfulness to all generations. So the meditation this week is going to come in three parts, and actually the reading of the scripture will as well. What you just heard Daniel read is Psalm 100 from the Bible that we often use in worship. It's known as the Inclusive Bible the first egalitarian edition. And we use it for a number of different reasons, but one is that it uses a lot of gender inclusive language. It also helps us to paint a picture of the missing characters, those who get left out of the scriptures so often. It is by no means the only translation out there, which is why for today's meditation, there will be two others that you'll hear Daniel read in just a minute. I chose to begin this meditation in a place that is important to me. It's a place that became a lifeline during our pandemic pre-recorded days. It's the prayer garden, the prayer walk across the street from my house. And I came specifically to the beginning where I remembered this sign was hanging. It says, praise the Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. And I really thought that that was Psalm 100, and then I got here and it said Psalm 106. So I looked it up. And in fact, it, when I went back to some of my uh, writings on the Psalms and my learnings from seminary, it's clear that Psalm 100 is a part of a series of Psalms 
that all have this phrase, God's steadfast love endures forever. It's in 106 and 107 and a few others as well, which was a good reminder that this was not a fleeting thought for the authors. This was something that, of which they were reminded over and over and over again. And of course, you noticed as I read that this translation on this sign is not the same as what is in here. And that's okay. That's the reflection of St. Peter's, where our language does indeed matter. But what matters even more is our understanding of God and God's presence among us and among the others. I was taken aback when I looked at what Daniel read and I realized in five verses, five verses, the name of God is mentioned at least 15 times based on translation. Imagine how you would work God into five sentences of your own musings. I'm not sure I've done that recently. Imagine just being able to call on God and to thank God and to say, yeah, this is what it's about. That's what this psalm does. It reminds us that there is joy, that making a joyful noise is sometimes mowing your lawn and sometimes crying and sometimes laughing with glee. God's love endures in all of that. Let's pause there, and then we'll return to this scripture, but with a different translation. Today's reading is Psalm 100 from Open to You, Zen-inspired translations of the Psalms by Norman Fisher. All the earth shouts for you. We serve you joyfully. Come into your presence with thanksgiving songs. We know you intimidate, as all know we come from you. Are you? Your people, flock of your pasture, wholly yours. As we enter your gate with thanksgiving songs, enter your court with chants of praise, we offer all our thanks, and heap blessings on your unsayableness. For you are goodness, endless kindness, truthful now and throughout the generations. I kind of want to just sit in that translation. I was gifted this book of Zen-inspired psalms probably 20 years ago. It's getting a little worn around the edges, but the words seem to never tire. What jumped out at me when Daniel read Psalm 100 from this version were these words, for you are goodness, endless kindness, truthfulness now and throughout the generations. And just before that, heap blessings on your unsayableness. The actual word God does not appear in this translation at all. But there were other words to describe God, and that really took me aback. I came a little farther down on the prayer path only to be greeted by this, <laughs> roadblocks. I don't know if you can tell, but it's really hard to see the path. And as much as I want to give thanks, as much as I want to be at home in this space that I know I was at one time, it doesn't feel the same. In fact, it feels kind of creepy. I found myself looking all around. There's a new smell and it's not a great one. I even put on my stole. I had forgotten in the first segment. But as I got to this juncture where I couldn't really see where the path was, I wanted another protection, a mantle, a marking, a reminder that this work is bigger, and these ponderings are bigger than this space, or even my spirit. You see, I was trained at Boston University School of Theology, and I'm not close to there anymore. So I rarely get to go back and soak up the goodness of that space. And this, this space known as the prayer walk, 
it became a substitute, if you will, a space that really filled my soul. And then I came back today and it was overgrown and difficult to navigate. And if I'm being honest, kind of depressing. If I'm being really honest, I think maybe, maybe that's part of the experience of church for many of us. That we come every now and then, whether online or in person, and it doesn't feel the same. It's a little overgrown. We can't find our path. The people don't look the same. It smells a little different. And then I return to the psalm. God's unsayableness, truthfulness, goodness, kindness, and the clincher, now and in all generations. My crankiness started to settle because I realized that even though if this space is overgrown, even though it's fallen out of repair, there is still a sacredness to these grounds. And the roadblocks, the growth, it made me think differently. It made me feel grateful for the ways in which some paths are cleared and sometimes we're forced to slow down and find a new way. Thank you, unsayable God, for the truth-telling, the discomfort, the way in which Psalm 100 and this prayer path has challenged me and hopefully all of us in this moment. Rest with that as you listen to the third and final interpretation translation of Psalm 100. It too is a little bit different. Today's reading is Psalm 100 from Psalms for Praying by Nan Merrill. Sing a joyful noise to the beloved all peoples of the earth. Serve love with a glad heart. Join hands in the great dance of life. Know that the beloved of your heart is the divine presence. Love created us, and we belong to the Most High. We are born to be loving, expressions of the Creator's divine plan. Open the gates of your heart with gratitude, and enter love's courts with praise. Give thanks to the beloved, bless love's holy name. For love is of God, and lives in your heart forever, with faith, truth, and joy now and in all that is to come. Alleluia! Amen. I passed this sign on my way to this spot. It was so overgrown you could barely see the words, the question that it was prompting. But the question was, how can I serve you? And I turned the corner only to find the path even more cluttered more crowded, more obstacles, more enclosed. But I had Psalm 100 literally in my hand and in my heart from hearing that reading. This is from Psalms for Praying, an invitation to wholeness. Wholeness. Wholeness involves not just myself, but the other. And that's where I found really good direction in today's scripture. It ties to that sign. How can we serve God? <laughs> Sing a joyful noise. But then notice what Nan Merrill did was use love as the marker for God. Enter love's court. Bless love's holy name, for love is of God and lives in your heart forever. Love created us. Serve love with a glad heart. Dancing all around this scripture is love. And that is one of the answers to that question. A little bit of love and this path might be cleaned up. A little bit of love and we might just let it go. Both are reasonable responses. 
I feel more drawn to one than the other, but that's just me. I have to remember that there is another who might feel that this is not what is needed. And maybe that's the key in this week's scripture, to recognize that it calls us to make a joyful noise, but we might not all be making the same noise, and to call us to this place of understanding God as love. Now, to some of you, that's going to sound super trite. Of course, God is love. But I want to go a step further and say, so what do you do with it? How do you love in a world that so often doesn't seem to love back? How do you love? How do you get connected to God in a world where inequality reigns supreme? God's love endures forever, we are told. And maybe the challenge is for ours to endure as well for our love to not get caught up in all of the obstacles, all of the changes, all of the discomfort, but rather for our love to push through, to find a way, to trust that there is still goodness, even when it doesn't feel so familiar. Let's rest in that. I'm going to make my way out of this sacred space, but I'm going to do so in prayer, trusting that whatever is blocking the way is an opportunity. And whatever surprises me might just be God's love. I trust that you will explore your sacred spaces as well. Let that be our labor in the days ahead. God, in your many names, in your various spaces, with all the words and sometimes none. Amen. As we come to this time of prayer, I'm coming to you from Eden Theological Seminary, where I graduated from seminary just a few years ago. I came to this place, a place that taught me a great deal about prayer, the power of prayer, and how prayer is a spiritual practice. We often use that term, spiritual practice, but we don't often explain what it means. To me, what spiritual practices are are anything that we engage in with some regularity, a moment where we're vulnerable and where we're imperfect, that we encounter the spirit of the divine. This fountain that's behind me was often a place that we as a community here at Eden 
would do a spiritual practice. In the United Church of Christ, we recognize two main sacraments, the sacrament of Holy Communion and the sacrament of baptism. We often take part in Holy Communion with a semi-regularness. We consider it a spiritual practice, whether it's once a month or often, more often than that. But we rarely think of baptism as a spiritual practice. We think of it as a thing we do one time in our life. But in reality, baptism too can be a spiritual practice, not in that we be rebaptized, but that any time we encounter water, we think of it as a way to wash, a way to engage in a spiritual practice. So today, wherever you find yourself, I want you to think about both communion as a spiritual practice and baptism as a spiritual practice. With that in mind, let us pray. Gracious and bountiful God, we come to you during this time of prayer, during this spiritual practice, to admit that we need practice, that we are imperfect, and that we are in community with others who are as well. We come to this time of prayer remembering both communion and our baptism as moments in our lives not fixed, but continuing to happen over and over again, reminding us of God's unending love and grace for us. During this time of prayer, we ask for blessings upon our lives, God, to comfort those in our community who are sick, to be with those in our community who are grieving, to celebrate the joys in our lives, and to remember those who we've lost. God, we ask that you join us in these spiritual practices, these moments of remembrance, that you would fill us with the spirit to do your work and your justice in the world and to remember that we do it in a community. We do these things and ask these blessings, God, in the name of the one who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Creator God, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory now and forever. Amen. Hi, my name is Vicki Allen. I'm the student pastor here at St. Peter's. Uh, I am a student at Christian Theological Seminary, which is where I am right now. You may not know this, but when St. Peter's, uh, when you give to St. Peter's, you are also giving to uh, Christian Theological Seminary, uh, one of the places that St. Peter's, uh, you know, gives to, is the school where they can, you know, so that. You can help support students like me and, you know, my friends here during this time of generosity. You know, if you can think about the different ways you are able to give in this world, whether it be time, talent, or treasure, and know that you are helping to create a better world.
Will you pray with me? God of abundance, thank you for the gifts that you have given us and for the chance to share those gifts with others. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We find ourselves at various tables, couches, floors, maybe even a boat or two, and we are together while apart. We are surrounded by one or many, or perhaps just memories of those who have come to this table before us. As we prepare to celebrate communion together, we recognize that God's love endures in mystery, in truth, in question, and in the many types of bread and snacks and drinks and cups. God's love endures in this time, in ritual and in sacrament, in togetherness hopeful of all that might come, and trusting that the doubts are worth it, we pray. God, be with us as we partake, as we enjoy a meal. Be in this bread, this cup, all who are gathered. Help us feel your spirit among us, within us, moving through us. For the mysteries the connectedness, the wonder and the possibility, we give thanks as we come to the table. Amen. Amen. 
It was a night that Jesus was eating with friends, a night on which he had already been betrayed when he took a loaf of bread, he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you. As often as you eat it, remember me. Dakota, Vicki, and all who gather in this time, take and eat the bread of life. In a similar fashion also after supper, Jesus took a cup, he blessed it and he poured it and he gave it to those gathered saying, this is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you and for all a sign of God's unending love. The cup of life for you, Lori. Cup of life. Cup of life for you, Vicki. And the cup of life for you all, wherever you find yourself, the promise of new life. Take and drink. Thank you, God, for bringing us together when we are apart here at your table. May we remember that when even if we are far apart, we are still together, one with you. Amen. 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 God's love endures forever. All are welcome. God's love endures forever. Go out into the world in peace. God's love endures forever. Sit down. Take a moment to just be in the beautiful creation. Perhaps look in a mirror and know that you too are a beautiful creation. God's love endures forever. In the name of the Creator the Christ, 
and the Holy Spirit. Amen.